Welcome to a special edition of Power Charting. This is our year-end special, and we, do, we are recording this on December 24th. I have no idea when it's going to be on, but I think it's going to be on periodically through the holidays. We are not on the normal power charting cycle for this episode, so, but we have a, a very provocative discussion topic for today. Is the business cycle dead? And we have two exceptional business cycle analysts to uh, help us with this topic today. But the idea is that the Fed is really in a place where they've provided all this Fed accommodation endlessly, which has given us permanently low interest rates, seemingly permanently low interest rates. And with all of this, we have low and stable inflation rates. And it makes one think that we may be on a permanent prosperity plateau. And so this really leads to the idea or the question, has the business cycle been uh, done away with? Are we looking at a biz set of business conditions where the business cycle is effectively dead for the foreseeable future? So with that, we have two great speakers with us today. We have Joe Turner, who has 50 years of experience as a registered investment advisor, a portfolio manager with an exceptional track record. And his whole career, he has been a business cycle analyst. As a matter of fact, Joe, as an adjunct professor at Golden Gate University, taught a course on business cycle analysis uh, back in the 80s. And it was an exceptional course. Uh, a lot of uh, students went through that program and uh, raved about it. We also have with us Jim Copas, CFA, who is works with Joe Turner and is a quite an accomplished economist in his own right. I call him an economist but he really has um, a, a really broad spectrum of skills. Pring Turner Capital Group, as a group, studies the business cycle and then actively allocates assets across portfolios using a combination of financial, business cycle, and technical analysis tools to create these methodologies that they are going to talk about today. And so uh, we're really excited about that. And Jim and Joe are going to lead this discussion for us. So uh, with that, I want to make one quick uh, uh, point here about the TSA ASF. And that is, is that if you like this conversation today, Joe, Jim, and Martin Pring, their other partner, and Tom Copas are going to do a free webinar for the TSA ASF in January on the 9th. And this is a free webinar, which is going to continue this discussion. And so to go to the tsaasf.org website to learn more, the announcement will be up soon and you'll be able to register for that event. And of course, the idea is become a member. The TSA ASF is the oldest technical society in the country. They have exceptional programs month in and month out. Become a member at a very reasonable price and uh, it's educationally driven. Become a member and uh, attend these wonderful uh, programs each month. Okay, and with that, let's get on with the show. Joe and Jim, hey, it's so great to have you here for the inaugural edition of the Power Charting Holiday Show. Glad you're here. Thanks, Bruce. It's awesome. Tuesdays are one of my favorite days and best days of the week. I also like Wednesdays, Thursdays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday as well, but Tuesday's a great day. 
All right. Well, we're, I'm glad we're doing this on a Tuesday then. So, and Joe, welcome. Thanks, Bruce. Enjoy, uh, enjoy doing the program. Let me, so, uh, let me jump into your question um, and the topic here, which is, is the business cycle dead? And the short answer to that is only if human nature has changed is the business cycle dead. Wow. Um, so, so can we end the show here? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, actually, I've, I've prepared a lot of material, uh, oh. material that we have used to teach uh, business cycle investing at Golden Gate. But I think that was like 15 weeks, three hour classes or so. So yeah, this semester, is going to be the executive summary. Good. Okay. Get, we'll get, get to it. Thanks. All right. Okay, so the, the question is important because uh, the business cycle and the direction and the le level of business activity has a profound influence on asset classes in, in what, how they perform and what the risk is on, on those uh, classes. So the beauty of business cycles is that they're repetition and that deals with the human nature side. Uh, the beauty about business cycle is the, uh, the fact is that there's a sequence to events in a business cycle. There's, uh, it's logical and rational. And these are the things that give us an insight then into how to position portfolios from an asset uh, class uh, place. What's missing in the question or what's behind the question, is the business cycle dead? That's the fact that we have not had a recession uh, since 2009. So in fact, this turns out to be the longest expansion in American history. And that includes 34 or 35 business cycles you could, uh, going back to the 1850s. And you might even count a few more, but they were more agricultural uh, cycles back in the late 1700s, early 1800s. But what we're looking at here, and this is the executive uh, summary of, uh, of the uh, business cycle and how we view the world and how we position and why we position portfolios the way we do. We want a decision-making process that we can replicate over and over and over again. So what we're looking at is uh, economic activity, Usually it's going from a contraction or recession uh, to recovery into an economic expansion, a peaking out, rolling over, and repeating this over and over and over again. Uh, working the math out, it, it turns out that a business cycle typically lasts four to five years. Uh, each business cycle has its own characteristic. This one, this business cycle that we're in right now, it's extremely long. It's also extremely slow growing. It's the slowest uh, business cycle expansion in our history. And uh, recessions or the contraction part is the purpose, I believe, is to correct the excesses that go on in the prior expansion. And again, just human nature. So what we see is uh, business activity, as this uh, chart shows, uh, we divided into uh, looking at the three major asset classes, bond stocks, and inflation beneficiaries, or things that are sensitive to uh, rising inflation. So stage one is uh, in early in the recession, interest rates decline, bond prices go up. Why? Because the demand for credit uh, is low and the supply, because the Federal Reserve is panicking and putting lots of money into the system, uh, that uh, supply demand puts uh, bond prices uh, in a favorable position. You want to buy bonds. The stock market starts smelling out the future turnaround. And in the middle of the worst black news about the economy, guess what? Stocks bottom out. That's stage two. And then finally, we get uh, a recovery of the economy. And at some point in that recovery, uh, again, market participants uh, take advantage of the situation by 
looking at things that benefit from inflation. So those are our three asset classes. And in sequence, it turns out uh, bonds turn favorable, stocks turn favorable, and then finally inflation. And then we just turn the uh, asset classes on their head. The economy gets so strong that interest rates go up, bond prices go down. So we want to sell bonds. And at some point, interest rates get so high, they compete for your money, for your investment dollars, stocks peak out. And then finally, as, we, as the economy slows down further and further, uh, it takes its toll on the demand for commodities. And in fact, it's a good time to sell inflation sensitive. So this is how we break the business cycle down at, uh, from Spring Turner's perspective. Uh, we have six stages. And at the bottom of the chart here, it shows you when it's a favorable time to own each asset class uh, through the six stages. So you can see that uh, where we are today is stage two, and we define stage two because we have a favorable, favorable environment for bonds, and this is measured by barometers and speedometers and models that we have developed over the years to reflect the favorable or unfavorable uh, times to own these particular assets. So we're in stage two right now because we have a favorable uh, bond reading and we have a favorable stock reading, which uh, Jim will show and reflect, show you why in uh, just a minute. Well, and so we have an unfavorable time for inflation. Well, let me ask you this question, Joe, because we've just gone through a 22 month uh, sideways period in the stock market where stocks have gone nowhere since January of 2018. And then at the end of 2019, um, at the end of 2018, we had a big collapse in interest rates. Interest rates went down a lot. And so is this like resetting the business cycle? Is the business cycle starting over? And that we this big sideways 22 month period that we've been in it was our bear market. Uh, spot on, Bruce. What what the model doesn't reflect here is we've had three specific slowdowns since we ended the last major recession, uh, the Great Recession in June of 2009, and. We've gone through three cycles where each time you reset the uh, economic clock, you also reset asset class, uh, uh, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. And we had one in 2011, a slowdown, and it reset the stock bond and inflation barometers. And then we had another one when uh, oil declined at the end of the uh, or halfway through 2014 into 2015, we had a slowdown there. That reset the clock. And then finally, 2018, uh, we reset the clock again with a, a slowdown. Stock market declined, what, 20% almost in the fourth quarter. So we've had three slowdowns in the midst of one long uh, expansion. But each one of those slowdowns was picked up, you know, in our barometers. And as an example, let me. Uh, uh, have you focus on uh, what's on the what's on the uh, chart here is the inflation barometer and what we're doing is we're measuring and this goes way back into the 50s so you have lots of cycles but we use uh, in the top half the CRB spot raw industrials and the reason we use that as a as an inflation uh, sensitive measure is almost every uh, industrial product in there is not traded on a commodity exchange. Therefore, it's not uh, influenced by uh, restrictions on trading or trading limits or leverage and so on. So it's a more pure reflection of demand uh, by uh, American industry. What I want you to focus on is look at those slowdowns that have taken place in the last few years. So you've got the most recent slowdown 
reflected here in spot raw materials in the 1819. You have the 2015, 2014, 15 slowdown. The, yeah, the second, second slowdown. And then you have the 2011 uh, slowdown there, which all, even though we have not had in the strictest sense or definition, a, an economic recession, we've had three slowdowns. And each one of these slowdowns has been picked up by the inflation uh, barometer. And Jim, in a minute, will show you our stock speedometer, which uh, also picked up the same three slowdowns and reset, uh, reset the clock. So uh, now, I've just taken you through the 15, uh, 15 uh, uh, classes, three hours each, 45 hours of instruction in maybe five minutes here. Does that mean but, there's going to be a test now? Yeah, well, I hope everybody paid attention and took fast notes, seriously. Or, or thanks, Bruce. Uh, you can also go, we've written a white paper on the website, and I would encourage uh, you to uh, explore the website. But we do have the uh, Pring-Turner approach to business cycle investing. It does go into uh, what we just talked about here much more in depth. But I think you'll see the, you know, the value of paying attention to the business cycle uh, as a roadmap for how to invest uh, in a more low risk or a more profitable uh, fashion. Um, so that's one layer. Uh, so I'm so just so go to PringTurner.com and then uh, drill into the uh, PringTurner.com website to get to this. Uh, white paper this study on the on business cycle investing and how right. okay yes and then so the viewers can take their time digesting uh, sure. what i just sped through <laughs> well so the so, big, a question uh very briefly is that i see that the inflation barometer is at a very low reading and these uh, spot raw materials prices are waning they're flagging and so this really suggests that the economy is not remotely overheated. And until this all get, until all this inflation uh, in industrial materials become, uh, go into a major uptrend in the inflation barometer, commodity barometer starts to really heat up, then there really isn't any uh, uh, overheating problems in the economy. Well, and, and you've hit the, uh, the key question for uh, 2020 and why I wanted to focus on this. You're starting to see a little improvement in the uh, inflation barometer. Uh, Martin focused, uh, he writes a, a monthly newsletter, the Intermarket Review. And this last month, he focused on uh, commodity prices with the fact that they may be close to reversing. We're starting to see uh green shoots if you would in uh commodity prices so uh along with uh, things like we have a, a pring turner leading economic indicator that's uh strengthening you're seeing uh, things like uh ecri economic cycle research institute leading indicators business leading indicators starting to uh reverse up so i think the great question is going to be and why we want to stay focused on this uh, is we, we could likely be on the cusp of seeing this barometer uh, improve. And it wouldn't be surprising given how far along in the business cycle we are and how strong uh, consumer spending is or how low the unemployment rate is at, you know, three and a half percent. Certain aspects of the economy are now running, you know, full sprint. So uh, keeping in mind that inflation uh, the CPI and so on is a lagging economic indicator going back to our six stage cycle. Um, it could well be that would be the event of 2020 from an investing perspective. So, and this would this would tell us in effect that the business cycle is alive and well as if we start to get these things heating up and eventually it starts to worry the Fed. And And keep in mind that inflation is of our three bell-shaped curves that all fit together, inflation 
is one of the last things to move up. So it would not be surprising this far along in the business cycle uh, and with this recovery of this slowdown to see inflation pick up. So something we're watching, I'm sure we'll be writing about this, posting articles and so on and so forth uh, as we go through the year. But, and also if you look at things that have been out of favor for so long, you have a lot of uh, commodity sensitive uh, types of companies out there that are really depressed, really represent great value uh, and something that we obviously are doing our homework uh, looking at. So, so this inflation trend could kick, kick up and start to, to run, and it could run for a long time in a bull market. So the bull market could go for stocks while inflation is starting to heat up, and it's only in the later stages that the Fed starts to really worry about that. So this could take months and years to unfold. Could, could well take it. And if you pay attention to the recent Fed comments, Federal Reserve comments, they've said, you know, we might let inflation run a little hot. So in other words, the, the Fed will be waiting for inflation to show up, but, you know, before they start reacting and take away the punch bowl. They so should, that's an interesting. Yeah. They thing. should be careful what they wish for. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But let All me, right, so, uh, let me move yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we, we have about seven and a half minutes left, so. Uh, well, that's, yeah, and I was just going to say, you can tune in, uh, check into the website. I'm sure, you know, we'll have articles updating, you know, the scenario and business cycle progress. But I do want to turn, uh, turn this over because we do have other tools and other aspects that we want to uh, talk about. And so I'm going to turn this over to our resident uh, charter financial analyst who's going to take, uh, take even more uh, uh, steps down the business cycle. Thanks, Joe, and, and thanks, Bruce, uh, for that great introduction here. Uh, you mentioned Pring Turner, and a lot of stock chart subscribers will be familiar with the name Pring, Martin Pring. He's a partner, and and really uh, one of the tools that we've that he's very famous for is his barometers, which measure as Joe was just going through the inflation barometer there and commodity prices. He also does it for bonds and stocks. And, and so really one concept that we've used and worked with Martin to create is what we call our Pring Turner stock speedometer. And that's here in this chart here. And the way to think about it is a, a speedometer sim simply like you have in your car. How fast are you driving? We use the analogy of how fast do you want to drive your stock portfolio? Um, and there's times when you're in more of the danger zone when you don't have a lot of indicators working in your manner and other times when you're in the safety zone uh, and returns have been historically quite strong. Um, right now, we're at a 90% reading. It doesn't get much better than that. As you can see from the green uh, highlights here recently, the stock market's been up and, and also what Joe touched upon, you can see the other slowdowns that the speedometer picked up in 2011. 2015, uh, and then here at the end of, of 2018. And so uh, uh, a lot of the indicators are technical in nature. And in fact, here exclusive to you stock chart subscribers, we haven't released any of the components before, but I'm going to talk about two specific ones uh, that make up the speedometer here. And we call it our 120% rule because when this rule goes positive, you want to be 120% long. No, just kidding, because we don't use any leverage or uh, go long in, in our uh, client portfolios. We're actually uh, more on the conservative side and looking to protect during drawdowns. But this rule is, uh, is basically be, uh, based on a, the main rule of don't fight the Fed and don't fight the trend, which um, when you have that combination together, uh, with the stock market trending higher, uh, and we use the, the S&P versus its 12-month moving average in combination with uh, our measure for the Fed is the three-month financial commercial paper yield versus its 12-month moving average. So if yields are going lower, if the Fed is being accommodative, and the market is up and trending higher, that is uh, a phenomenal time that you want to be invested. 
uh, in the market historically. I think the returns are roughly since 1900. We did a study a few years back and the returns during that time frame were roughly 16% annualized. Now it doesn't happen very often as you can see here on the chart. Uh, I think this is the first signal. We might have had some late in 2014. It just turned green here recently in 2019 as the market was moving higher uh, and the Fed recently changed course um, here recently. So um, it's a pretty unique time uh, to be invested in historically, a, uh, as you can see from some of the green lines here, it's not perfect, but the odds are certainly in your favor if you're uh, wanting to stay optimistic about the market. Now that being said, uh, we are recording here on Christmas Eve. Uh, 2019, had we been doing this meeting on Christmas Eve 2018, uh, would have been a much different uh, investor sentiment going on out there. Uh, this is, we actually touched upon it in a uh, volatility post we did last year. Uh, one of these indicators is the CNN Fear and Greed Index. And as you can see, in 2018, around this time, we, investors were extremely fearful. Uh, the reading was at three. It goes all the way from zero to 100. Uh, so three is a pretty low reading. And, um, uh, you know, typically that's a time where uh, uh, emotions are running high. I don't know if everyone recalls last, last year, but uh, there was a lot of volatility. The Fed was raising interest rates while the market was declining. Uh, a slowdown was already baked into a cake, and a lot of people were saying a recession was ahead. Uh, Martin Pring actually put together a couple great research pieces uh, talking about that uh, at that time. Um, not sure if people recall those, but they were great to reread. Uh, the low but, day, the low day was December twenty fourth of twenty eighteen, at that extremely uh, extreme fear reading. So uh, interesting that here we are a year later on December twenty fourth and carry on Jim tell yeah. us where we are well it's just uh, it's gone from one uh, one side of the spectrum to the other and now we're at 91 so I just showed you a couple charts the speedometer being positive the 120 rule that we call being positive which is a component of the speedometer um, so you know historically those all you can do are put the odds in your favor and when those are positive it's it's strong but we're also saying uh, investor sentiment is getting a bit frothy so um, we actually, you know, uh, we've been bullish for our clients throughout the year. We've actually taken a few minor just chips off the table here just to reset uh, and with, op with setting up for an opportunity for this to move back into the fear zone and, and add some more chips and possibly to some value uh, stocks or markets like Joe was touching upon. So we're, uh, we've had a good year, excited about, um, what's in store and we think that these indicators are are lining up well uh, so it's fascinating that uh you have this di this dichotomy this extreme from fear to greed that occurred like almost on the anniversary date of the beginning of this big rally that we've had and uh so here we are at the end of the year and there's some optimism that's uh, shown up which uh will be interesting to see how that happens but go ahead, Jim, tell them how, uh, tell them about PringTurner.com and well, or I'll tell them that PringTurner.com uh, is the place to go to get more content from the, the Jim and Joe on business cycle analysis that they do there. And they're one of the oldest shops doing this type of analysis, especially for the purposes of asset allocation and sector rotation. And also join us on January 9th at TSAA.SF, uh, TSAASF.org, uh, to, to hear additional uh, thoughts that they have on business cycle and where 2020 is going. So this conversation will continue as we go forward. So Joe and Jim, thank you so much for being here and uh, we'll see you in January. Our pleasure, Bruce. Thanks, Thank Bruce. You.